So the, the region we're going to talk about now is Tavernelle. Tavernelle is really one of those great areas for Sangiovese. It's really considered by uh, some really well-respected geologists and also um, professors between Florence and Siena as the ideal climate, the microclimate for Sangiovese, largely benefiting from four main components. Uh, altitude is really critical here, 300 to 350 meters above sea level. South, southwest exposure, we'll look at the map here in a little bit, and you'll see how that influence of the Mediterranean breeze coming from Arema is evident. It's, it's visual, you can actually see it. Uh, you can feel it definitely when you're in the vineyards of places like Case Vate or Pieve Santa Restituta or Caprili, which are some really good reference producers from the area. This, this idea of rocky, well-drained soils is not new to us, but of Eocene origins, which is lime state, limestone as a base and then the silicate soil, it's coming from largely considered one formation of soil over time. Uh, it was argued before that there were two or three, if you look at some of the notes from Indagata that have shed some light on more recent um, decisions made by some geologists out of Italy. So they're, they're really kind of sticking with this Eocene origin, limestone, silicate soils as the base, but those are critical pieces, right? Because rocky, well-drained soils uh, challenge vigor of plants. So you really want uh, the vines to struggle to find water. They have to go deeper with their roots. Case in point is uh, Soldera, which obviously is near and dear to our hearts because we import them into several markets around the US. But when you're there, you see good spacing of the vines. You don't need to have densely planted vineyards from Soldera because frankly speaking, uh, there's already a challenge to the vines to get to a water source. So they're gonna go down as opposed to going wide because it's, it's not easy pickings for them to find moisture. Um, you do feel that in warm vintages in Tavernelle. You know, that's, there's good examples of those like 2009, uh, 17 is a vintage coming up that's a warmer vintage as well. Uh, it's not necessarily drought conditions in 2017, but it's just warmer in general. And, and so as you look to those wines, look for them to reflect that um, in, in, the, in the profile of the wines a little bit more, more muscle, um, maybe a little more fat on them, less, less acidity, and, and maybe looking for some of that to reflect itself in, in the wines, but still should, should reflect great fruit um, and, and a good backbone there. But here again, you're at 300, 350 meters above sea level. That, the idea of this Mediterranean breeze, when we look at this image here, and, and again, here's Tavernelle, it's always important to look at Sant'Angelo and Scalo and Camigliano, as I commented before, these two regions, Sant'Angelo and Scalo and, and Camigliano, these are warmer regions. We'll look again at the distance between, just for points of reference, Tavernelle, you're three kilometers, uh, three and a half kilometers here, and then from there down to Sant'Angelo and Scalo, six kilometers. There is a tremendous amount of difference. I'm not gonna get into the, the elevation differences here, but as we talked about before, you've got Sant'Angelo, you've got uh, differences in soil that uh, reflect that in, in the way the wines are, are constructed. Uh, you see bigger styles of wine. The same with Camigliano, a bit more extraction. Uh, Tavernelli, you're looking actually for really beautiful fruit, great acid backbone to the wines. Lower elevation, Sant'Angelo and Camigliano with reference to Tavernelli, as I mentioned before, 300 to 350 meters above sea level here, south, southwest exposure, and then these rocky wilderness soils. So we'll take a little peek into Soldera. Uh, as again, just mentioned, it's a, it's a great reference producer for us. You can see, as opposed to areas like Castelnuovo or the north and south side of the area of Montalcino, you don't see these really dramatic drops in elevation from one vineyard to the next, or even within vineyards, like we would see with someone like Salicuti or even Stella di Campalto between, you know, her farm and Poggio di Soto just up the road sort of thing. Instead, here you're looking for a bit more gradual uh, landscape. We're going to sort of drop our, our axis a little bit. We're going to shift over so that we look out towards the Morema. And I think this is relevant for a couple of reasons. One, it gives you an idea of the influence of the sea. Uh, you've got a very strong Mediterranean breeze coming in here. You can see the Umbrone pushing out into the water, Sardinia here in the distance, and then Valta de Rosa, which is in the Morema area, uh, a producer that we work with from the Cecchi family. It's a wonderful winery. And so here in Tavernelli, you've got the Mediterranean breeze, which if you were at lower elevation, like you would be in Camigliano or in Sant'Angelo in Scalo, that brings more heat to the vineyards. But because you're at a higher elevation, some of that heat has become uh, cooler and, and it also chases away the rain. So you're really fortunate in a classic vintage. Again, you can show some struggle in a warmer vintage, a hot vintage or a drought vintage, because you're just not going to get as much moisture and you've still got 
uh, that wind coming through the dry off the grapes. So you don't look for dehydration as a, as a byproduct of that, but just to note that, you know, some of these producers in and around the air of Tavernel, they, they may offer you really beautiful fruit in the classic vintages and then wear it a little bit on some of those warmer vintages, which is very typical of people that are uh, making really good wines. You know, they're going to show vintage to vintage. But nonetheless, here as we, as we sort of uh, scoot into Tavernelle uh, and we look at Soldera uh, in greater detail, we'll try and here and follow Soldera, as I mentioned before. Um, we'll just sort of zoom around. One thing to note with Soldera specifically is the idea in the 80s of really a pioneering concept, which was biodiversity in the wineries intentionally. So uh, Gianfranco Soldera and Graziella, his wife, moved down from Milan in the late 70s to start Soldera. Early vintages in the 80s were already wonderful wines. That's how his reputation was really built. But you can see down here in this quad, in this little section, this is a two hectare garden, a thousand species of roses, really introduced the idea of cross pollination between this vineyard block here and, and the overall environment, the ecosystem of the vineyards. It doesn't seem like a foreign concept today because all you hear about are uh, winemakers and bees and other types of biodiversity, you know, introducing donkeys and chickens if they're going down the Demeter path, the idea of planting fruit trees to bring more insects that are predators to aphids that, that grow on and can be dangerous to the vines uh, for, for great wine producers. You know, that concept today is being talked about a lot. Back in the 80s, it was relatively uh, inconspicuous. You didn't really hear anyone talking about, oh, I really need to create biodiversity so that I don't have these, these uh, predators in my vineyards. Then it was chemical, chemical, chemical. But here you had Gianfranco Soldera saying, no, I, I have a, a beautiful property. I have an ideal climate. I have the Mediterranean influence. And I really want to focus on making really wonderful wines from healthy vineyards, healthy grapes. Um, as a byproduct of that, you know, as I talked about before, uh, you have less density in the vineyards because you already have a bigger challenge with these well-drained soils of limestone silicate substance. Um, you've got biodiversity here between these, these cross-pollination of the vineyards, and you've got a really high standard of quality selecting from what could be a total of over 40,000 bottles to down to around 15,000 to make a really high quality Sangiovese. Today, uh, the wines of Soldera are not actually classified as DOCG, Brunelli di Montalcino, their IGT Sangiovese for some political reasons, but the wine is absolutely a symbol of quality for the region and really uh, an, an absolute representation of the quality of fruit you get from Tavernelli. So again, I'll zoom in a little bit to Soldera, and then I just want to flip it so you can see some of the rolling hills that I had talked about before. Again, you're, you're not going to see those huge drops. You've got Bosco here. Now we're looking almost dead north. Bosco's up here in that north western quadrant uh, as we continue to drop down and take a look you can see it's it's a rolling hill you're not seeing those big sweeping changes like you would if you were in Castelnuovo or the southern part of the region um, from Montalcino off the off the fort and again you've got that influence of of the coast and then that warmer region St. Angelo Scala that really helps us avoid some of the, the pitfalls of heat in Tavernelle but again as I mentioned before um, lack of moisture because those breezes from Med really just sweep that rain right off the face of Tavernelle and it goes over into Bosco, which is lower lying, more forest, or it's, or it's protected, um, or Sant'Angelo in Scala. So a, a really interesting look here at the region, uh, the, the microclimate of Tavernelle. Again, the, the idea that you've got a couple of great reference producers here, but largely those price points are not in reach for the average consumer of Brunello, which is already in a pretty um, elite group of, of wine drinkers around the world because the wines of Montalcino are not inexpensive. But for sure, you're talking about prices on uh, Soldera Casabase of five, six hundred dollars a bottle. The Avicenta Restituta from Gaia, also not inexpensive. Caprilli is probably more approachable in terms of price point. They have some wonderful wines to explore as well. Um, and, and also very good representation of Tavernelle in terms of great quality from the region. 